Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to today's Enterprise Connect Bootcamp webinar, Creating a Secure and Compliant Work from Home Contact Center Environment, sponsored by Tetherfy and broadcast by Informa. I'm Eric Kraft with Enterprise Connect, and I'll be your moderator today. We have just a few announcements before we begin. This webinar is designed to be interactive. The doc of widgets at the bottom of your screen will allow you to learn about today's speakers, download resources, share this webinar via social media outlets, and participate in the Q&A session that takes place at the end of our presentation. The slides will advance automatically throughout the event. You may also download a copy of the slides via the resources widget. Toward the end of our webinar, we'll ask you to complete our survey found on the right-hand side of your screen. Please take a minute to fill this out before leaving us today, as your feedback will provide us with valuable information on how we can improve future events. Lastly, if you're experiencing any technical problems, please click the Help widget found at the bottom of your screen or type your issue into the Q&A area, and we'll be glad to offer one-on-one -on -one assistance. Now on to the presentation creating a secure and compliant work from home contact center environment. Discussing today's topic are Sheila McGee-Smith, President and Principal Analyst at McGee-Smith Analytics, and Vineeth Nayak, Founder and Managing Director for TetherFi. Sheila, we'll start with you. Thank you, Eric, and good morning, everyone. So before we dive into our topic, I wanna to set the stage and I'm going to use data from the NTT Customer Experience Benchmarking Report to help guide that initial conversation. So every year, um, for the last 20 plus years, NTT has surveyed contact center executives um, and they, they've, they've um, interviewed them across the entire globe. So you'll see here 558 different companies um, responded to this question that was answered in the first quarter of 2020, pre-pandemic, okay? So what strategies are being used to meet the evolving workforce demands? And what you see here is flexible hours came out number one, remote working. I mean, companies have come to realize that they can get better employees, better employee engagement, if they offer more flexible structured um, schedules. So while flexible schedules in remote working have been available for many years, often the technology wasn't that easy. I remember 15 years ago, you know, talking about with old premises equipment, sending agents home or being able to use remote workers. But it involves sending equipment home with the agent or dedicated lines at home. And so while it was possible, it, it did never became very popular. The other part of it that wasn't popular was the notion of how do we maintain control or how do we maintain quality when agents are at home? That was always seemed to be a struggle. At, at some point it became um, easy for us to send workers home because the internet became available and web-based applications. And still, there has been a reticence to have agents working from home. I mean, there was a sense that if I can see them, then I can manage better what's going on. So while there has been an uptick of remote working and remote agents in the past few years uh, with the, the, the rise of ubiquitous uh, uh, broadband, most estimates show that less than 5% of workers were remote before the current pandemic. And internationally, it was even less common than in the United States and, and Canada. So companies allowing remote work have lower turnover. They have employees that are happier. So the, the, the trick is to say, how do we do this in a way that we're comfortable that we're getting the work that we need and we want and, and making that available to the agents at the same time and getting those benefits. 
So there's a really strong correlation between how engaged employees are and how well they are delivering the customer experience. And so what this graph is showing, again, from the 2020 report, it's comparing results from 2019 and 2020 about the engagement of, of agents. And the box up there on the upper right tells the story. In that year, agent engagement was moving in the wrong direction. The percent thought to be enthusiastic. So this is sort of managers and CIOs answering this question about how engaged are your agents. And only 7% in 2020 thought that their agents were enthusiastic about um, translating the value of the company and the brand to the customers that they spoke to. Meanwhile, those with very minimal engagement rose from 2019 to 2020, from 11% a year ago to 18%. And in the middle there, we're seeing again, the direction of change is wrong. So somehow agents are over time becoming less engaged. So how do we address that? Because again, we know that connection between customer experience and good quality customer care. So another of the questions that was asked is what are the main drivers of these new working practices and cultural change? And talent acquisition and retention came in number one. I mean, we can clearly have a, a broader pool of agents to hire if we make um, remote working available. And the good news from this, uh, from this question and the results from this question is that globally, companies are recognizing the issue of declining agent engagement, and they're working to solve the problem. So they're looking at these various ways of you know, improving employee experience, creating an engaged workforce um, in order to create and deliver a better customer experience. But you know, what it also says is this is a work in progress. This is not complete. You know, 19 to 20, we're going in the wrong direction. How do we reverse that curve? So then if we ask, you know, sort of a broad question of the, you know, almost a thousand people who are asked this question, what are the top technology priorities for customer experience? We're not surprised that over the last three years, analytics is very important, digital transformation and the, the introduction of new digital channels is very important. Customer journey management, the ability to not just handle voice, but to understand the context of digital engagement that the customer may have had. All of those very important and, and make sense, right? But biometrics, pretty far down on the list. You know, a technology that, again, has been around for 10 or 15 years, but is really becoming much more accurate with the work that's being done by Google and Microsoft and IBM. And then cybersecurity, again, not as high in the rankings here in terms of customer experience, the customer experience management team. So cybersecurity and biometrics pre-pandemic, not seen as particularly top priorities in terms of delivering great customer care. And yet, there are security threats inside the contact center, right? Um, if authentication and data loss are two of the biggest threats to customer experience, cybersecurity threats, then both of those can be tied to agent behavior. I'm sure, you know, I've had the experience and I'm sure many of you on the, uh, the webinar today have had the experience of having your credit card number used um, after having a, a call center call and having it used fraudulently. It happened to me. Um, you know, luckily, the, the credit card companies are working pretty hard to figure out how to um, track those issues and correct them before they become very big ones. But again, we probably all know somebody who's had a, you know, sort of theft of identity issue. Um, and so, much as customer experience is important, working remotely from home is going to make for a more engaged workforce. There's also that downside. How do I prevent some of the issues that could occur that could 
impact my customers in terms of their security. So interestingly, earlier this week in a, a boot camp session with another firm called Journey, uh, this was the name of that session. It was called A Million Agents Working From Home, What Could Possibly Go Wrong? And that particular webinar, we talked about the issues that can happen in the contact center, right? Um, and how to address some of those issues. And what we're gonna be talking about more today is how do we address the issues that could be happening on the agent side? How do we address the issues, not just of security, but of engagement and supervision? And so it's sort of two sides of the same coin that we're gonna be talking about here. Because as we know, one of the things that happened when we sent a million agents home in uh, April and May of 2020, is that, as the Wall Street Journal reported in mid-May, is that a rooster on my customer support call? And it was a rooster because there was an overseas call center employee working from home um, and neighborhood animals were chiming in. And this was uh, a Verizon customer, you know, calling in about their mobile phone, you know, perhaps having an issue and totally thrown off by the noises and sounds hearing in the background. So this is one of the things that becomes an agent side issue, right? If you're a contact center manager and you're sitting in your contact center, you know if somebody brought a rooster into the room, you know right away, right? Um, when people are working from home, it's more difficult to see these kinds of distractions that may be occurring. So what are the challenges, some of the remote agent challenges for supervisors and therefore for the companies? I mean, we can, we can almost see it here in the two photos, right? On the top photo, we have supervisors who can walk around, who can help, who can you know, make sure that the help required in the moment of an interaction is available. And contrasting that with, some, with an agent who's sitting in her kitchen uh, and handling calls and, and doing the best you can. So how is, are there ways to replicate that eyes on supervision that we get in the traditional contact center? Are there ways to provide supervisors with tools to manage this new normal distributed agent workforce? And can we do that and, uh, and avoid communication breakdowns and bottlenecks? Because this is the situation that we're in right now. It's a situation that will likely last for another year or so. And so it's something that companies are looking for ways to address. I think the first answer was, let's get the agents home. Let's get them on laptops. Let's get them a headset. Let's get them so that they can answer the phone. Next step is how do we optimize this arrangement that is probably, as I said, gonna go on for a year or so. And so Tenify, the sponsor of our webinar today, has been working in this area for a while already. Here we're seeing four of their customers um, working with remote agents and working with this notion of supervision of remote agents. So I'm going to turn it over to Venice to walk us through some of the things they've come up with. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. I hope everybody can hear me well. Um, welcome, uh, everyone, uh, for this webinar. Um, so just a quick intro about Tedify. So we've been um, uh, in, in business in Singapore uh, and Southeast Asia, partnering with uh, our clients in some of the transformational initiatives, enabling in-app digital customer engagement. And if you see on top of the box here, DBS uh, is one of the largest banks uh, in Singapore. Um, they're using our VTM kiosk uh, solution enabling their branch tellers to work from contact center. And this was actually launched a couple of years back. Um, and now, uh, guess what? Uh, they're all actually working from home uh, for the last two months. Uh, so you can imagine the transformation uh, from branch teller, face-to-face, -to, -face, to CC, contact center video, and now from home, right? So in fact, this, this VTM story has, uh, has been also featured in Singapore Prime Minister's initiative of reskilling and training of Singapore Workforce Program, right? Um, uh, another bank uh, called Tomorrow Digital Bank, which is a Singapore bank, uh, is actually using uh, our, our SDK communication platform, Thailand, Indonesia, 
primarily for customer acquisition, onboarding, and customer service completely in their mobile app platform, right? So they, they rebranded themselves as Tomorrow, uh, short form TMRW that you see on the on the left hand side, uh, and that's the first mobility or mobile only digital bank designed for millennia, millennials in the region, right? Um, and that's that's their claim, and uh, they have been very very successful in their launch uh, last year in Thailand as well as Indonesia this year, right? And uh, we have a, a, a large telecom provider, uh, Singtel. Um, they're actually using our uh, agent console uh, and has helped them migrate their entire cost consumer sales team to work from home, right? And this is something that uh, we've done in the last uh, two months. Uh, previously, they were working from office um, using the existing legacy telephony platform, and we've used the same platform to shift and migrate all their sales team to work from home, right? And the last one on the left-hand uh, corner is a bank in Indonesia uh, called Mandiri. Now, they're using our platform to onboard new customers using our video KYC platform, which is helping uh, them onboard people across 17,000 islands of Indonesia right, uh, to be included uh, within their banking system. And uh, we are seeing more than 8,000 video sessions on a daily basis on this platform. And, um, and has been increasing for the last two months um, and you know, helping the cause of banking the unbanked. And uh, if, you, if you know the stats, Indonesia has about 70,000, or rather 70% uh, of uh, population unbanked, right? And with 100% mobile penetration, right? So we are kind of privileged to be part of all these stories and uh, looking forward to expanding to new markets and build new partnerships and stories around the world, right? And let me just, so if you see how we do this, right? So our uh, high level foundation of our digital customer service platform uh, is built specifically around multi-experience. So when I mean multi-experience, it's all about type, touch, video, voice, co-browse and collaborate. Uh, uh, and that's uh, all within the same session. That's a very critical uh, theme for us. And our primary objective uh, has been to resolve the issues of the customers reaching the enterprise in the same session within the shortest possible time, right? So, so that the customer journey is not going to be, uh, it has to be very short, right? That's the, that's the core of what we do. And if, if you see here, we've got two blocks. Uh, so primarily everybody has been focusing on customer service, digital customer experience. But most importantly, uh, we would like to take this same approach to even agents, not just customers for uh, of enterprise, right? So that's one of the key things uh, that I think I'm gonna talk about in the next few slides, right? So if you see here, our digital first, uh, when I mean uh, digital first is all about avoiding omni-channel problems by offering multiple channels. So, and that's been the biggest challenge in the contact center world today that I've seen, right? And uh, what it means is we just go with our mobile SDKs that offers channels like text, uh, bots, uh, and then gets escalated to a human. Uh, from text, you could even escalate to an audio or a video or even a co-browser screen share, uh, all in the same session, right? And, and you could even extend this to any different form factor like kiosk uh, or unmanned uh, tablets, right? So that's one of the key areas of our digital customer experience has been for all our enterprise customers, right? And at the same time, we've not, we've not, when it comes to agents or employees within the call center, there's been, has always been a challenge uh, and then it's never been a priority for enterprise, right? So the current situation has been tremendously accelerated and, and, and agents going digital is now no longer a choice, right? That's where I believe we have a very strong capability in delivering um, agent uh, work uh, to home, right? And that's where our product has been fundamentally built on, on technologies like WebRTC to deliver lightweight browser-based agent console. Uh, and primarily supervisor console uh, is, is a very key aspect of our solution, right? And combine that with AI ML on video has enabled us to secure and provide a compliant environment that allows enterprises to operate 
safely without any fear of data breach, right? So that's the um, key element uh, for us um, in this uh, agent experience. So what I'm going to do in this slide is I give you a glimpse of uh, what our work from home solution looks like. Um, so we have a very, all, all of these blocks are modular. Uh, so you could, you could actually pick and choose, uh, for example, agent console. That's completely web-based with no requirement to install. You could potentially run it on any device using a browser. It gives flexible, um, uh, flexibility for agents to operate from anywhere using any device. So that's, that's a key uh, element of that agent console. Uh, we believe that collaboration within the team in a remote setup is very, very critical for managers and supervisors to keep track of operations. And that's where our supervisor console provides all that's required capabilities to manage uh, agents remotely, right? Last but not the least uh, is our security and compliance module. That's going to be the key differentiator and, uh, and an advantage in our solution to take agents home, right? Keep in mind that, uh, you know, you could pick and choose these modules um, to address some of the specific needs uh, of, of the enterprise. Um, and we, we also seen there's been a debate around convenience versus security, right? So, so here, our, with our solution, we've made sure we've balanced this pretty well. Uh, so in a nutshell, we have tried to provide business continuity without compromising on any of the security or, or compliance requirements of the enterprise, right? So let me go through some of the scenarios that we have here uh, with, with our solution. And, and uh, this UI is all designed uh, typically by the customers. So here is uh, some of the screens that I have. Uh, so this UI um, uh, it basically allows agents to log in uh, through, the, through their LDAP or AD. And it'll also pick up the enrolled picture. Uh, so that's where you see facial recognition in action. And uh, in the background, we're also doing liveness detection. Uh, that's very, very key because uh, we want to make sure uh, there's nobody using a picture or, or photo from the uh, phone, right? And we also want to make sure there's no proxy. Uh, the facial recognition allows and um, ensures that there's no brother or somebody else uh, logging into the system. And at the same time, the space auth is happening continuously at regular intervals, uh, on, on also on specific actions, uh, even after login. But it's not just uh, one time during login, and you could move out of the seat and somebody else would start taking calls, right? So uh, even if you're trying to change to available, uh, to start accepting calls, that's when this kicks in and ensures uh, do a face off. And uh, if it's not the person, uh, you can't change state, right? So that's uh, taken care of uh, the screen, right? The other, once you're ready to take calls, obviously, uh, the, the interactions will start hitting. And uh, what we've done additionally on top of uh, what uh, you see here is emotion detection, right? So this has been something uh, has been around uh, with our self-view camera. Uh, this is an idea that we got while we were looking at call centers, uh, which had a lot of mirrors in, in, on the desk. And all these agents were uh, requested to look at the mirror while on call and smile more often, right? So that's where we picked up that idea and we put that in uh, in our in our uh, web agent console, uh, and that's where uh, these uh, smiles and uh, you know, emotion feeds back into the agent's dashboard. Uh, so is he closing the call with a smile? Uh, is he opening the call with a smile? So all of that goes in um, into the uh, as as a, as a feedback as a dashboard to this agent, right? And so let's let's look at some of the. Um, uh, security and compliance stuff in action here, right? So if, imagine um, agent has been in available mode and ready to take calls and he suddenly disappears from the seat, right? Um, and imagine the amount of data that's on the device that could be pet, you know, potentially uh, stolen, right? So hence, what it does, our system detects this and alerts and immediately and uh, that there has been a violation and uh, you could configure uh, an action uh, like you could log off the agent, or you could just push the agent to aux, uh, or you could even lock the screen. So, so you could you could decide what kind of uh, um, actions that you want to take. So, um, so our system allows you to monitor continuously, and at the same time allows you to configure what actions you need to take. Right. 
Now, we were, we were talking about supervisors. So it, it's very important for supervisors to be um, uh, in control of situations. And it, it's quite easy when, when you're in office setup. But uh, in, in case of remote agents, uh, even supervisors are working from home, right? Um, so that's where we, we thought it's very important for everybody to look at this aspect seriously and how supervisors could manage these agents effectively while they're on not you know in, in a face-to-face -face situation under the same roof right um so here if you look at a scenario where a supervisor is able to manage these agents remotely i can i can do a chat i can do an instant messaging and also real time i can look at all the people uh, in my team and manage them in terms of what they are doing um, and even um, get into a remote or real-time monitor all interactions as well as manage all the violations. And I could even barge in and uh, of any into any handling, uh, any, any interactions, right? And now we've also plugged in a bunch of collaborative features like instant messaging, uh, broadcast messaging, or even host a virtual meeting within the team to ensure uh, supervisors are constantly in touch uh, with their team and helping their team make progress, right? So pretty much uh, we have seen a lot of now supervisors use Teams or Zoom and some of these other collaborative tools. So we, we just want to make sure when they use this console, they don't have to get out of this platform and still be able to collaborate in their own team. So that's the key team here, right? And this is a, a, an interesting and a very critical for supervisors, uh, we believe, uh, while they're working from home. Uh, and here's where they can remotely view the camera of the agent on demand uh, and view the screen uh, and also the geolocation. Uh, sounds a bit creepy, but uh, again, uh, you need to provide consent. Uh, the agents have to obviously, uh, and agents, uh, when they are logged into their system, contacts and system, only then uh, they're able to do that, right? Um, and uh, here, uh, interestingly, we have had uh, client requirements to, uh, you know, even prevent uh, agents from logging in from an unauthorized location. So imagine somebody logging in from a cafe or open area where uh, the data uh, on the device could be compromised. So the geolocation uh, also of the agent uh, is a very critical uh, data, uh, and you could decide what you want to do with it, right? And now, uh, but interestingly, for supervisors, for, for many years, uh, they've been managing uh, contact center SLA by reacting to current load, right? Depending on the calls in queue, uh, they would typically go around, look for an agent in AUX and move them to available. So that's been a norm in, in, in olden days, right? Now, imagine doing this on an agent in a remote location. Um, you know, you probably, I mean, you already, already have SLA uh, real-time dashboards. You know the queues are not looking good. I have few skills, uh, agents in this skill uh, who are in aux. Now, how do I make sure I can pick up one of these uh, agents and push him uh, in, from an aux to online or available? Um, so the answer is actually in the previous slide that you just saw, right? So supervisors can go in and peep into uh, the agent that I'm going to pick up and say, OK, I'm going to make sure Yes, I have an agent uh, on the seat, uh, and then use this method to change uh, instantly and make this agent online, right? So, so it's a combination of remote, you know, monitoring with controlling agent status uh, is key, we believe, uh, for some of these um, agents or supervisors to collaborate. Right? Now. Here is uh, uh, you know an interesting scenario, and I think uh, if you remember a few slides back, Sheila talked about a rooster on the call. Um, uh, but we have we have we have to make sure we prevent people or children or even canine friends nearby uh, hanging around uh, agents' work area. Right? Uh, this is also configured to detect if they are in camera frame for certain seconds or is just passing by. Um, uh, only then raise an alert and report back to our system. Uh, I think more than a fraud situation, this could be distraction to uh, agents sometimes and can be avoided, obviously. Right? Um, uh, one of the clients here uh, detects this. I mean, and they, they, they immediately want to take some action, and, and the, the action gets executed to close the CRM screen if that's open. 
um, and um, if there is a secondary phase, it would it would be to, you know we, we, they, they're probably thinking they would be here to peep into the screen and uh, copy certain data on the screen. So so uh, so that's something that can be configured to completely block and prevent. Right. I think now this is the scenario. Uh, this is the scenario to be. Uh, it's quite obvious a breach, uh, an unacceptable behavior uh, as an agent trying to copy some data from the screen, right? And this is where we need to be extra careful, making sure we have a strong model that detects all objectionable objects and that's classified uh, as a violation, right? And, um, and uh, uh, this is where uh, one of our clients incidentally is closing and locking the screen and, and requires authorization from supervisor to unlock and continue to work, right? So primarily, this could be configured to detect any other uh, objects that you might think of for your requirements, right? Uh, for, for some business, some could be uh, uh, objectionable objects. Uh, for some, um, need not be, right? But this is definitely. And uh, camera vision is something that we want to harness, right? And and if you see here, in summary, we are, we are trying to see how we could use camera on an agent device uh, combined with our technology to prevent uh, some of the frauds and also act as a deterrent. I think that's that's the key thing uh, that we want to make sure. Uh, and also keep in mind that you're not you're not going to be doing any continuous recording or streaming back to our server. So we we're quite uh, aware of some of the personal loss that is uh, uh, you know relevant in some of the countries, uh, what we are doing instead is applying, uh, you know, more like a, uh, running this on a client and we only send back if there is a violation configured and it's it, that is detected. Uh, uh, otherwise, nothing goes back to back end server, right? So imagine a situation, we are kind of applying the concept of someone jumping uh, the traffic signal and um, um, you know, we try to find some evidence that, yeah, I, I did, you know, I, I obviously the next thing that I'm going to do as an agent is you know, argue back and say, no, I didn't do it. And that's where uh, the evidence is an is important feature of the solution. And we capture the metadata uh, when the violation occurs and also a picture of the violation as part of the evidence. And it's up to the enterprise to decide if they want to keep it uh, or uh, they just want the metadata as as an or as a report, right? So that's up to um, uh, the enterprise to decide that, right? And in, in some custom places, uh, what they have uh, requested us to do is also certain uh, amount of screen capture uh, for about fifteen to twenty seconds to be buffered and stored back when this violation happens. And at the same time, what were the activities on? on the camera, right? So even that to be recorded and sent back to the server as as a, as an evidence, right? And it, it's sometimes uh, uh, in, a, in a situation where you are running uh, inside a VPN or a virtual private network or, or a virtual desktop uh, interface, VDI kind of a setup, there could be certain short lag. Uh, practically, that, that's something that we have seen, right? And that's where some of these uh, uh, 15 minutes of data is very critical to make sense of what's happened um, and at the same time uh, was, was agent trying to do something uh, uh, not supposed to do, right? So that's that's the pretty much um, is, is what uh, we have done with our, with our technology and, and our solution. And uh, like I said, uh, there's, there's a lot of opportunity. I think uh, the enterprise uh, will be able to make significant savings in real estate. I, I, that's something that we believe. And at the same time, um, be able to employ a new set of people uh, who could be available to work from home, right? Without having uh, uh, to worry about any kind of data breach. I think that's a significant, uh, we believe, uh, step uh, in this whole solution. Um, and and we're already seeing numbers where the productivity has has not been compromised. Definitely something that we are seeing that. Uh, likewise for agents, 
uh, and supervisors, work is uh, coming to them, right? Uh, which I believe significantly improve quality of life for a lot of people uh, in developing countries. Like Sheila just mentioned about, um, um, uh, you know, after, uh, somewhere in some part of developing countries. So, the, so those those probably uh, will be the story to talk about, right? Uh, as, as, as normal, right? Um, and I think uh, a lot of these people in developing countries will significantly save time in, in commutes to offices. It's probably no longer required, right? And finally, for customers, I believe uh, this is business as usual, EAU, right? Uh, without any compromise uh, and, and hopefully uh, resulting in an improved service and experience, right? And yeah, we, we, we are quite bullish about the agent uh, happiness is going to drive uh, the next level of customer engagement uh, and customer happiness. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's the, the key message uh, that we believe Tetafy uh, offers in, in, in a work from home situation, right? Yep, what do you wish, Sheila? So, Vinith, before you run away, uh, there's one aspect that um, I'd like you to spend a minute talking about, if you would, of the solution, which I found really compelling, which is you can use this, the Tetherfy solution, on top of your existing contact center. So if you're on an Avaya or if you're on a Cisco, this is something that you can overlay. Can you talk to that for a minute? Sure, sure. Uh, that, that's a good point. Uh, maybe it wasn't too obvious, uh, Sheila, in my slides, <laughs> right? So uh, our key uh, proposition is business continuity, which means if you are on Avaya or, or Cisco or, or um, uh, AWS Connect or any of these telephony platforms, and you could continue to use your routing, uh, reporting, recording, uh, all of that aspect remains as is, nothing changes. Uh, all we are doing is making sure the last mile of agents are going to be working on any device or from anywhere. So that's the whole idea. And we're going to plug in. We've done this uh, uh, for many customers uh, on different telephony. We're, we're just going to plug in our WebRTC engine uh, to deliver media back onto the, the device. And if you see our agent console also integrates back to uh, the telephony vendors platform, right? That's that's one of the options in the module. And at the same time, uh, if you see uh, the security aspect, even that's a standalone module. So there's a lot of uh, BPOs who are interested to know what we do for them or what we could do for them uh, where they don't you have a telephony platform. So they could use this as a standalone uh, in, in their uh, portal uh, or, or simple widget uh, plugin, right? Uh, uh, and this could even apply for a telephony vendor as well. If the telephony vendor has already built in a web client, uh, like Workspace on Oceana or or Finesse on Cisco, or even AWS Connect for that matter, they could just plug in our SDK and JS, and all you see is is the is a self view uh, on on the screen. Again, self-view is not going to be mandatory. Self-view is just for uh, agents to be reassured that, yeah, this is what they are seeing, or nobody is seeing, actually, right? And they get to see this as part of the uh, security module, right? So we could plug into uh, seamlessly and natively with telephony vendors, or uh, we could be an overlay on top of the telephony provider's uh, solution. Excellent. Yeah, I think that was a, a good point for people who are watching to understand, because often the theory is that in order to have innovation, you have to you know, get rid of everything that you have and start all over again. And while that may be an option, uh, in this case, you can actually have the best of both worlds. You can have that innovation and continue to use the solutions that you have. And you've already done it with customers uh, who are both Avaya or Cisco or probably others that we know about. So I'm gonna kind of wrap up some of the comments that Vineeth made. So what is in it for customers? So think about a, a contact center that is now run 
using the technology that you just saw, right? So especially right now, we're in a situation where customers are even more frustrated than ever with long hold times and poor processes of being put on hold and, and uh, uh, when because they can't go and do the things they used to be able to do. I can't go to a store and try on that dress. I have to rely on having it sent to me and sending it back. And often that may mean a contact center call. I can't go to my bank as easily as I could before and, and complete the transactions that I want. And so for agents, they're getting customers who are more upset than they were before, who are more frustrated. And so what's in this for customers is having agents who are successfully supervised and are prepared for the challenges of remote working and have the tools to overcome those challenges. You know, the ability to reach out to a supervisor, the ability to see what's happening. And so, and, and you know, obviously the other part of this for customers is understanding that there's a more secure environment for the transactions that they are completing, be they banking or telemedicine or any other kind of interaction. So what's in it for agents? Um, agent attrition is still one of the biggest challenges that contact centers face today. Uh, I was speaking to a, an insurance company here in the United States who said, Prior to the pandemic, here in the U.S., we had almost zero unemployment. Uh, so certainly that has changed, but we still have a position where there are lots of opportunities for contact center agents to move from one job to another. And so what you want is to preserve that investment that you've made in hiring and training that agent. So it's still a big issue. So the solution that Tetherfly helps create here is implementing tools and processes that help the empower the agents so that they know that they're doing their job better. You know, it helps them get on a path to becoming more highly skilled and improving their engagement with customers. So, you know, my experience with, with agents is they love to have the, um, the, the dashboards, the sentiment scores as, as soon as possible. They're children of their reinforcement. And to the extent that we can give that information to them, they become more engaged employees for us. But at the end of the day, why would we put in this kind of technology, right? We will do it for the business outcomes that it will deliver. It's gonna reduce complaints, right? We're not gonna have the wrong person answering calls because somebody signed up for an agent shift and gave it to their brother to do instead. We're not gonna have that. We're not gonna have, we're not gonna have situations where we have unhappy, disgruntled agents talking to customers like this all day because we'll know, right? We'll know and we'll be able to address it. We'll have more online activity to the extent that customers are having good interactions with their with their agents. They'll do more. They'll buy more and everything will run better. So we do this for better business outcomes in addition to having a happier agent and happier customer. Because customers expect us to deliver great customer experience. The bar has been set, right? The bar has been set by companies like Amazon, like Uber, where their technology is used to create a great customer experience. I mean, you know, Amazon knows every book I've read in the last 15 years. Uber knows I travel a lot, you know, so I'm probably a good person to keep track of, uh, or I did. As I was to say. But it's, you know, customers, modern customers in every industry, in banking, in telehealth, in technical support, insurance, retail, they all expect modern, effective, and empathetic interactions with agents. And this kind of technology from Tetherfy, I think, helps bring that better uh, customer experience to customers. So Vineeth and I, are going to thank you 
with Tetherfy's slide. <laughs> Tetherfy's doing this in the pursuit of customer and employee happiness. If the customers are happy and the employees are happy, the company's happy. What do you say, Beneath? I, I would suggest the reverse. The, if the employees are happy, the customers are going to be happy. Excellent. True. <laughs> and we will now turn yeah. it over to Eric to run the Q&A. All right. Well, thanks very much, Sheila. And thanks, uh, Vineeth. Um, uh, great discussion. You know, just really interesting product. Um, and we got a lot of great questions here, too. So I'll jump right in. Uh, the first one is is a fairly straightforward question. Um, somebody's asking, you know, considering how heavily the solution relies on video, what do you recommend to customers about uh, cameras? I, I mean, does it have to be a particularly high quality camera or um, what, do you have kind of a, a recommendation that you make just on making sure that the, the quality of the video is, is sufficient? Uh, that's a good, good point. So we uh, rely on the inbuilt camera that's available with the device. Uh, that's the primary uh, aspect. So this whole thing started obviously uh, knowing uh, that there's uh, there's not going to be new cameras that can be shipped while the agents are at home. So we relied on uh, an existing camera on the device. But if we get better camera, obviously the vis you know the, the angle you get a wider angle, you get a lot more to see. Uh, at, at this point of time, with the laptop camera, you probably don't see my hands, um, and and uh, uh, you know I could be taking notes, right? So that's where uh, we like to have better wider angle cameras, so that we could improve the vision of the, uh, the, the analytics that we run, and then we could process and find more violations, right? Uh, but we don't we don't really uh, have anything uh, you know like specific that this has to be so better. Uh, wider angle camera makes a lot more sense for us. Right. Got it. And and is I mean just to just to clarify the the your really your proprietary technology or your secret sauce is in the the AI that's that's sort of parsing the video. Is that is that right? Yes. Yes. And like I said, um, probably there's been a lot of technology that does this processing. In the back end, and that requires a huge amount of bandwidth, right? To send a video across the network is not going to be easy. So, our model has been also quite lightweight, uh, so that it could be processed at the client, uh, you know, knowing what's a kind of processor or, or a spec that the agent would typically have, right? So, it's very, very crucial for us to run that model uh, on the device uh, instead of streaming it back and and processing that and you know coming back with the violation detection so complete round trip it's completely eliminated with our solution right got it and that kind of leads to another question we've got um somebody's asking what's what's the typical kind of level of effort to to integrate uh your product and and um get it get it up and running what hardware is required um obviously you mentioned the camera um and then uh, what what's uh, Tetherfy's role in sort of ongoing support or maintenance? Yeah, that's that's uh, an interesting question. So we we have got a couple of options. One is on the cloud, so um, we could enable this uh, on the cloud, specifically the security module. Um, and uh, if you require an agent console that requires telephony integration to back to your system uh, with CTI capabilities. Um, uh, then, um, yeah, you would probably need some kind of a connector back to your on-premise telephony platform. Um, but typically, yeah, um, you know, that that's the, the part. Uh, it's the hard part where we have to, you know, let let have have some kind of an install done on on site to have an integration done. Uh, if, if not, then it's a completely cloud. We could turn that on um, within a couple of days for customers to try that out. Right. And what is probably uh, I missed the second part of the question? Uh, does does Tetherfy have kind of a maintenance contract, or are you do you continue to be involved in the the maintenance yeah. and, and yeah. upgrade? Yeah, the software yeah the software has uh, if it's perpetual uh, and capex, uh, you will have a one time cost to it and and recurring maintenance. Um, but SaaS model is something that we prefer, uh, which kind of helps us keep updating the models and and keep improving. Um, uh, the, uh, 
analytics as well, right? Sure. Okay. okay. Um, and I have a question that's a follow up on the uh, telephony integration and it, and sort of what the actions that that the discovery that your system does may trigger and and you know it, it seems to to trigger trigger alerts and potentially um, some actions on the on the the sort of agent desktop software or maybe the back you know back end CRM but um, uh, someone's asking does it, do you exercise any control or can you invoke anything on the telephony itself or is it strictly about just kind of shutting down the desktop or adjusting the desktop? So uh, in terms of action, uh, we've got a couple of options again. Um, so when I, uh, like I said, our, our solution has two components. One is continuous monitoring, uh, detecting, uh, looking for you know, violations. The second option is all about taking action. And uh, again, there we have classified uh, two elements to this. One is what kind of web action that you want to take. So if there is uh, some kind of a web portal or web CRM, like a salesforce.com, uh, we could very, very easily create and take action to, to maybe switch that confidential data screen. Um, or if you have a thick client that requires some kind of a, uh, a CRM that's running on the uh, client's uh, desktop, then you have an element that's gonna be installed uh, on the agent desktop to take action um, uh, as well. So again, that's an optional part where you could just rely on reporting violation detection and um, leave it at that, or you could have an action module to take action um, of closing something or alerting something or closing certain data that's detected uh, is on the screen, right? Okay. Okay. Okay, I want to turn to Sheila and and ask you kind of a question about sort of a broader environment or about the what you know as somebody who knows what's going on in the contact center, um, you know, on a, a day day in day out basis. What do you think uh, our contact managers? Uh, and actually, I'll ask Vineeth too when Sheila's done. But are contact center managers ready to use video to this extent um, in how they manage agents? Ready both in the sense of being able to, to do this technically, but also I think just in how they manage. So if you had asked me the question four months ago, my, my answer likely would have been different. I think we have just as a society gotten so much more used to video and using video all the time, right? Um, so I think the video element uh, is sort of off the table more than it would have been three or four months ago. Um, the, the part about being able to supervise remotely, um, you know, I, as I said earlier in the webinar, this notion of, you know, the first step was just to get everybody home so they could answer calls. And the second step is we've got to optimize this. This is for the long term. Um, and so I think that, that supervisors would welcome, you know, new ways of being able to manage. So I think, I think there is a market for this. And beneath what uh, what's been your observation is as you roll the product out and and work with customers are do you, is there a, a barrier with some managers to to get them to kind of accept this type of supervision or are they just happy to have it? Yeah, it's it's mixed, right? I mean, there's a lot of lot of uh, supervisors who are happy uh, to have control over certain uh, aspects. Um, um, of you know, like a, you know, like you saw the remote peep or remote view of the screens. What's going on? Um, is the person in front? Uh, which is typically in a, in, a, in a controlled manner. An office is taken care, of, right? Whereas um, situation right now, um, we don't see the team face to face, and that's where uh, the collaboration of supervisors within the team has been a is a, has been an excellent feature. As far as I have seen a lot of take up, especially uh, people asking, because we know that there could be uh, uh, some other collaboration tool like Teams or Zoom or some of these uh, blue jeans, uh, all of them um, being used within the enterprise. But using uh, collaboration tool on our supervisor console has been something that they didn't have, they don't have to go out and they can have 
uh, meeting within the team uh, by just pulling them into the conference room, like uh, you pull them in, in your office, right? So, um, yeah, definitely mixed um, um, uh, feedback around these. But I think, uh, yeah, like, when, when while the technology is improving, um, the U design and UI UX uh, also, uh, it's going to be really, really useful or helpful um, in making sure there's a lot more take up rate. I think that's something that we are continuously improving on. Okay. And I'm just curious, Sheila, if you've seen much example, you know, obviously this kind of takes things to another level with being able to, to quantify and turn into uh, metrics, you know, or just action items, what's going on in the video. But has there, is there much of a history of contact center managers in the old world, even wanting to somehow use video just to sort of in, in, in you know, anecdotally almost watch what their uh, what their agents are doing. I would not say that I've heard this in the past, right? I think in the last couple of years, if you think about the whole coming together of UC and CC, you know, let's take the pandemic out of the equation for a moment. Um, just the coming together of UCAS and CCAS, there has been discussion of being able to use this for remote workers to have the kind of meetings that Vanith was just talking about, to be able to have a team meeting with your remotes. As you recall, the insurance company that we did a webinar with earlier this month had already started increasing the number of remote workers that they had. So, and they were, you know, not necessarily using video, but I can see that they would have, you know, welcomed that aspect to creating team energy, right? Because remember, one of the things she talked about was uh, the inability to have sort of a water cooler conversation. So I can, I can see creating that kind of a, a Zoom room or, you know, Facebook room or whatever kind of room. Um, but again, things are moving so quickly here, right? Things are changing. And I think appetites for video technology are just dramatically different today than they were. Got it. Okay. And I'll close with a, a question for Vineeth. Um, we've talked about the, um, you know, the, the remote uh, agent experience, the work from home experience. Uh, and obviously that's the world we'll be living in for some time. But does your product, I mean, are you expecting once contact centers do reopen their, their physical facilities, that there's a role for it um, at, the, at a contact center office as well? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, maybe not so much on, on probably on the video, but uh, this, will, this will definitely be uh, kind of, could be extended to office. Um, uh, and again, uh, uh, you don't have to go into an office with your phones in the locker room, probably, right? Um, this could be, you know, norm in offices too. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm pretty bullish about a lot of these uh, percentage uh, of people continuing to working from home, right? I think that's the, the, the market that we are after. And again, this could be turned off um, uh, uh, if you don't want to be doing it uh, at office. Absolutely possible, right? Got it. And Sheila, you know, everything it, everything you and I have been talking about on webinars and conversations and calls for the last few months has been that that we are likely to see uh, more. You know, the, the, many of the agents continue to, to work remotely, and the real estate savings we've mentioned. Um, uh, custom, you know, agent satisfaction. So um, I think as Vineet said, it's, it's certainly something that, that there's, there's some time that, that you'll, you'll uh, have to use it. Nobody's going back to the office anytime soon. Right. And, and to your point, even when people can go back, we're, we're talking to companies every day that are saying, I'm going to allow agents to stay home because if they're more comfortable or, you know, as we've seen, we're getting some better results sometimes with agents working at home. And contact centers are, are not, tend not to be designed for really good distancing or any of the intermediate steps that, that uh, we're probably going to need. Correct. Correct. All right. Well, we're uh, just about at the top of the hour, so I wanted to um, thank everyone today. I want to uh, thank Sheila and Beneath for a great conversation. Uh, and thank the audience for attending. 
Um, within the next 24 hours, you'll get a follow-up email with details and a link to the presentation on demand. Um, and please feel free to, to share that with colleagues and peers that, that might also like to, to uh, hear this. Um, the, web the webinar is copyright by Informa. Presentation materials are owned by or copyrighted by Enterprise Connect and Tetherfy. And the individual speakers are solely responsible for their content and their opinions. So on behalf of Sheila and Beneath, I'm Eric Kraft. Thanks for your time and have a great day.